On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are sitting down to recount the Spartan race that Bennett just ran, and a couple of these other Veteran Day, kind of like Veteran Week, so to speak. E- events. Events, yeah. Yeah, this is this has been cool. So tell us, man, you ran a Spartan race. Was this your first Spartan race? Yeah, it's my first Spartan race, but not my first mud. Well, this wasn't a mud race, because this was at Fenway Park. So... Uh, pretty crazy running through a major league baseball park. Uh, yeah. but yet it was pretty freaking cool too. Like did, uh, I did like pushups in the, uh, visiting, uh, visiting team freaking locker room. And Oh damn. <laughs> just, I thought you were just going to say the dugout. You were like in the clubhouse. Yeah. We were in the clubhouse. It was freaking cool, man. We went through every, yeah, there, there was not a whole lot of that stadium we didn't cover other than like the, uh, like the executive offices or something, you know, other than that, uh, we were all over the place, man, from top to bottom. It was pretty cool. I mean, I did burpees in front of the green monster and on top of the green monster. Nice. How cool Hell is that? Yes. Yeah. For you losers out there who don't know what the green monster is. It's a gigantic outfield wall uh that few can really get the ball over so yeah. fenway is weird man it is weird but it's it's like a pretty cool shaping yeah know? totally but it's you know it's built it's because of where it's built yeah. you know so either way it's it was it was pretty cool it was uh it was only a uh, spartan sprint um but i've done a uh, uh i've done a warrior dash in the past um and that was uh on a um a ski slope so <laughs> Jesus. that was that was pretty rough. And then a tough mutter as well. You had a much more active veterans week than I did. Yeah. And then uh but prior to that, that was this was Saturday morning and, and it was a team of like eight of us. Yeah. And Who it was, was me all on and the team? Eddie Lazary, me, Eddie Lazary, Andrew McDowell, Andrew's sister in law. Nice. And then a, a couple guys that uh Andrew went to college with. Mm. <sighs> and we were team warrior hall Couple so we had of the t-shirts holes. and yeah man it was pretty cool oh yeah so we ran that and we did it as a team so uh we weren't fast but we were uh together um so it was pretty cool you know yes. and then uh went out and had a little food afterwards and you know it was it was good man yeah. But uh, Friday on Veterans Day, um, Eddie and I spent the whole day at this. Uh, uh, it, it's an event called Vets Rock mm-hmm. at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And uh, there's an expo. And uh, so they do it. half of it's an employment expo. The other half is a veterans. You know, we had God, I don't even know, man. It was a huge ballroom ch- chock full of people. Um, I don't know, probably 50 different employers, everybody from like the Connecticut state police to Lockheed Martin, to the FBI, to, you know, all of them, you basically pick one and and they were there. And then they had a, um, kind of like a vendor slash veteran service officer area. And there was probably between vendors and nonprofits and, uh, veteran service organizations. There's probably 60 other people you know 60 other booths everything from navy federal to warrior hall um so you had that and then you had the um uh suit the suit thing where they take the donated suits and hook guys up that need uh like an actual good fitting suit right you know so they have like tailors and everything you know See, that's very cool, man. That's unique yeah, it unto itself. You got a tailor. <clears throat> like there was a tailor on site to where you could get measured for a suit. I think so. Now, now cool. it wasn't like it wasn't like an actual. They would just do uh, set it up for alterations. Yeah. You know. Well, right. And some that of those I'm not things- positive. I'm not positive if they actually had the tailor. I just know that when I saw the guys coming out yeah. of that area, that the suits fit awful well. So right. it was either they had a ton of different sizes and really really worked on finding the guy one that fit. Good luck. You know what I mean? Right. Because I've seen those events too, where the suits, they just didn't, it just wasn't, you know, like the suit jacket's a little too big or. Right. And that, you know, they'd come out looking sloppy. Yeah. They didn't really look that sloppy out of this one. So I was impressed. Good. And, uh, you know, See, it, so, was, it was really cool. Yeah, you were definitely all over the... Like, I wound up going down to Wilmington November 9th to an right. event at the, 
the speakeasy, or excuse me, it's the Blind Elephant Speakeasy, which I swear to God, like I would not be able to find this place had I not overheard a fellow uh, call him, how do I put this? Like I was out walking around on the street and I heard somebody else, like this couple who was talking, they were like, see that elephant, that little... Yeah, you wouldn't know it, but there's actually a bar in there. And I'm like, what? You know, so I'm kind of doing my recon. My ears perked up. I'm like, okay. So I go down this nondescript alleyway. A little bit creepy. You know, I was packing. No big whoop. And uh, (laughs) I go into this back, you know, speakeasy. And I mean, it was beautiful in there. It was an amazing bar. You sign in, do whatever. There's like a little membership thing. Beautiful bar inside of an industrial, what used to be like warehouse. And this was a legit speakeasy. I just thought it was so cool. It had a loft area and all sorts of stuff they have a good web presence and you can't find them on the street so uh i was one of three of the panel members one was uh a a what it's like being a black person in entrepreneurship what it's like being a woman in entrepreneurship and what it's like being a veteran in entrepreneurship and uh one of the things so it was a good event you know what stays in the speakeasy or what's said in the speakeasy stays in the speakeasy so to speak but afterwards (laughs) I was speaking with a gentleman uh, because the comment was made or the question was made, hey, how do you feel about a specific event, like an event that is tailored specifically towards veterans, towards you know African-Americans in entrepreneurship, however politically correct you want to fluff that, women in entrepreneurship and all of this other stuff, right? So here's the point that I made just real quick. Uh, I was like, I wasn't born a veteran. And, right. And these folks were born uh, the subcategory that we have labeled. And so correct doing a shared experience, like I wanted the shared experience of being in the military. So having another veteran focused event, yes, I'm on board. But I'll say this to our listener audience and everybody else. Why do we still do these cheesy fucking events? Not not holistic and frou-frou. I'm talking about fucking cheesy. We're just like walking around expos all the time and all this other bullshit. Fuck that let's go shoot sporting clays or you know go to like a rock venue instead or something like that you know what i mean i'm just saying like dude i'm doing this next year i don't give a shit we're gonna have like some sort of bunker labs poker run or something to bring in my fellow motorcyclists well remember what we had we had (laughs) contemplated what we wanted to do that one time with warrior hall so you wanted to do the poker run and then have a concert yes so that that's what was kind of cool about Vets Rock um, is that it wasn't just the expo or uh, job fair or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You also had uh, this concert involved. So after the expo, you had a concert, yeah. and it wasn't just a concert. It was you had now. I, I mean, they kind of appealed to all veteran ages because they had Tony Orlando as the first. Oh, nice. As the first uh, act. You oh, know? my God. Right. But he was like the MC for the whole event. So you well, had him sense. sing, you know, like Yellow Ribbon Around the Oak Tree and, you know, all his <laughs> stuff. But, you know, and all the the more uh, stately, the more stately uh, uh, <laughs> veterans right. there were like, yeah. More and stately. we're all like, really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but anyway, um, so you had him uh, who, who was it was, you know, whatever. It was fine. And then you had uh, some other local band uh, who was okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you had Madison Rising, um, who is pretty good all the time. Oh, yeah. No, and they do a solid live show. They really do. They bring and, a lot uh, of energy to the room, man. It's they insane. Do. There are they some do. bands they who do. just kind of get up there and go through the motions. And I will say this. A.G. Larson is an insane guitarist, and you should watch him. Yes, it like, was good. That dude's going places, right? And don't well, get me wrong. Posted. I'm a huge fan of everyone involved in the band. But that dude shreds so gnarly. Anyway. <clears throat> right. So I, uh, you know, I posted that up on our Facebook page, the, uh, the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner performance, um, that they do. Yeah. It's pretty oh, yeah. awesome. So they had them and then it was Godsmack. What, what veteran slash military guy doesn't like Godsmack? And right. if you don't, there's some kind of issue. Right. Yeah. 
Especially if you're affiliated with the Navy in any way. Well, yeah. And it's not even like God smacks my favorite band, right? No. In, in, in the entire world. But oh, yeah. No, I've done some killing to God smack. Oh, you've done some killing. You've done some lifting. You've oh, yeah. done a lot. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the Navy Navy commercials, man, were speaking of cigars and sea stories. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They were featured as the Navy's, basically the Navy's theme song for six freaking years. Man. So, yeah. Anyway, go Navy, you know, great, right. great stuff. Dum, dum, da, dum, you know, right. good stuff. So, uh, you had Godsnack and then you had Dropkick Murphys, nice. which are a staple in, you know, yeah. the Northeast. Connecticut. Another high energy Conne- band. Can Conne- Conne- Connecticut and Massachusetts, if you're from there, you've probably seen them a dozen times. Question for you. <clears throat> Did they play the green fields of France? I, you know, and here's, here's where I have to be, uh, full disclosure. I actually left after their first song. Oh, no worries. Well, because I had a, um, you know, obviously I had an 845. This was already at 1030 and I had an 845 Spartan race start time at Spartan race in Boston, right. which, is, which is almost two hours away from right. where we're at. Not like, so, not like you, you were like, well, I got a lazy Sunday, you know, tomorrow. No, no. And, so and <laughs> I'm too freaking old now to be like, this is, it's. I can't approach things like Friday morning PT anymore. Right. <laughs> Thirsty Thursday, gents. Right. Let's go. And Let's get out of here. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Oh, God. So yeah. it's like they had an after party and everything, and I just didn't partake because, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine my 42 year old ass freaking? No, 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 not nope. having it. It was, it's hard enough. And I'm, you know, a good 50 pounds overweight. Uh, you're lucky I'm doing a Spartan race at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I'm not leaping great. over these walls like I used to. Yeah. If at all, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A couple of the walls, you know, you're talking. Yeah. Give me a boost. Give me a boost because I can't make it over. Right. Not by myself. <laughs> teamwork please please we need some teamwork here oh my goodness and uh you know like i i'm and it's funny because i'm basically like a mule give me the heavy shit to carry and i'll carry it all day right but don't ask me to run really fast and <laughs> don't ask me to do shit that takes a lot of agility right because it just doesn't happen your spirit animal can change right it's totally now fine. one of the things that was kind of cool yeah i'm more like a uh like an oxen now. <laughs> you know what I mean? A slow food. <laughs> oh, he got me. Uh, more like an oxen. Right. Like an oxen. Oh, like. God. So, but I can still throw a spear. Fuck so yes. Say. So they have a spear throw at Spartan races if you haven't. Oh, partaken. I didn't know that. So, like a javelin you know, like the, throw? The foam uh, uh, archery targets. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And and the spears, they, t- they make them out of... Uh, GP medium stakes, or not the stakes, the poles. Really? You know, the poles that hold up a freaking GP medium? Yeah. So you've got that long, you know, (laughs) that long metal piece that comes out of the top of the wooden thing. That's so perfect. And then they they tie a, uh, like, 550 cord onto the bottom of it. Like, they drill a hole in. 550 cord down to it so then you can retrieve the sphere by pulling it in you know what i'm saying right oh my god it's all for safety do you have a barrier because you don't want people running down that they're gonna get skewered right because half of the people running this race are complete morons anyway so (laughs) um yeah man so i actually stuck the freaking spear so that was cool hell yes fuck yes dude can you imagine a guy like sprinting at you full steam and you're like no problem bro i got this fucking whack Ah, like leveling a dude, taking him off his feet with right. a spear. Ah, Damn it. Fuck. Now I want a spear kill. Son of a bitch. You know, there's just so many kills that I want. You know I what want I mean? One of those like 12 foot Macedonian freaking spears. Yeah. See, you know what else I really want to do? Because I had one when I was a kid. I made an atlatl. Right. Right. And I really want to kill a deer with an atlatl. Like hanging out of a fucking tree stand. Right. You know, like, you know, what's up? I would ride that bitch. Damn it. Now I want a spear kill so bad. See, I was always a big fan of the, um, like, speaking of, like, ancient warfare, not necessarily ancient, but old warfare. Mm -hmm. I was always a fan of the, uh, oh, God, what's that weapon called? And the English used it very, very well. Uh, The halberd. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a gigantic spear pike with a battle axe on the end of it, basically. In essence, that's a rudimentary way of putting it. But 
they became very uh, very good at using those in formation. Oh. Could you imagine? No, I could not. <whistles> no, thank you. Hell, that's yeah, a meat no, grinder you. to go up against. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Good. I'm good. I don't ever want to play there. You know, so that's what I always say, man. It's like we, you know, the way that we go to war now is one thing. Yeah. But I mean, could you imagine standing in a shield wall and watching like imagine like the scene of at Sterling from uh, oh God, from yeah. Braveheart, yeah, where you literally have a shield wall, yeah, and you've got heavy cavalry just bearing down at you at full speed, right. Are you kidding me? No, that's fucking nuts. And no wonder they all got high before they did it and all got drunk. Oh, yeah, because you have to to go into battle like get that. like fucking bloodlust. yeah, oh, yeah, Are you kidding me. Yeah, but the other thing too though is like when you're when you're talking about that sort of wall, I immediately think of a of a phalanx. And if you're not familiar, listeners, read the book The Gates of Fire. Fantastic book. Um, it, it's an outstanding just fantastic portrayal, not portrayal. It's a real life account from a from one of the squires that was lifted off the battlefield, Thermopylae. And oh man, it's just so cool how they put together the phalanx with a shield wall on top and the way that they describe how the shield protects the man to your left. So really, when I think about that sort of warfare, I think about the come together as a phalanx as a universal front right. that is moving around like this fucking, I don't know, like well, this and then, deadly and it's armadillo. One thing to say, <laughs> like you've got Thermopylae, right? And right. then it just got better because Andrew the Great, or Andrew, <laughs> uh, Alexander the Great, <laughs> yeah. he really perfected that. And yeah. then on top of that, the Romans after that, they, dude, it, people don't understand. Like you hear about the barbarians. Yeah. And you hear about like guys like Attila and uh, you hear about guys like um, Hannibal, the Carthaginian, uh, you know. Yeah. Warlord, I guess is what you could call him. <laughs> general, Carthaginian general, even though he wasn't supported by Carthage for like half of the invasion. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, the Romans, nobody uh, could fuck with them. I, I mean, at, at the end of the day, the, their tactics were just insanity compared to and and they were just because it was a real professional army. It wasn't farmers thrown together right. in like a militia type thing. Like these guys would go into a place and they would come in. It was like, it's, you know, and then you, yeah, it's just nuts, man. And people, I, I always, you know, no, they don't get the credit that right. where credit is due is that a lot of the modern military stuff that we have was all derived from the Romans period. See now, um, cause everyone always romanticizes the Spartans and, Oh, this right, and then the other thing. But at the end of the day, why isn't, you know, why didn't the Spartans have a gigantic freaking uh, empire then if they were the best fighters? Have you ever, you know been, what I mean? Have you ever been to that area of the world? There is no reason to leave. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to go conquer anywhere else. The, right. It is warm and beautiful and sunny. So, but, but you understand what I'm saying. Round. You understand exactly. Yeah, hell yeah. I know what you're saying. And you know what? Here's the other thing is if they were so badass all the time, there were battles that they lost. Oh, it course. wasn't like, uh, you know, it's not like the, you know, they had no cavalry. They had no kind of anything. So anyway, well, and we you can build get into military history, that. but we're not going to get lopped into military See, now history. Now that here. we're talking about shields, now I want a fucking shield kill. See, I'm Googling over here like a tactical shield. Oh, dude. See, I'm the guy on Call of Duty who puts on overkill, okay, so that I can rock a tactical shield, but then I wear it on my back the whole time, and I run around with whatever other weapon I want out front, so it's like providing me rear cover You're when bad. I go slow. Sliding in. Yeah. This shit works, motherfucker. Pew, 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 pow! You know what I mean? And so, like, ugh, I want a tactical shield. Some of these on here are so badass. Can you imagine having like a shield on your back? I mean, I mean, not like super crazy heavy or anything. Something to kind of like shoot down into the ground and break up your pattern. Because, dude, I'm telling you, man, I've been on patrol where you're on Ranger file and you take contact and you're like, hmm. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to take cover. Like I legitimately, oh, yeah. nah, I don't, you know, I would love to take cover over there or, you know, uh, if I were the enemy, I would love to plant a fucking bomb over there. So maybe I shouldn't take cover behind that huge rock. You know, you're like, it's kind of like standing in the middle of Walmart parking lot without any cars in there whatsoever. And then somebody starts shooting at you. Where do you go? You know? And it's yeah. like tactical shield. Take when you start trying to dig into the pavement. Right. 
I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Tactical shield. I'm just trying to get below below uh, ground level. Oh, dude. <laughs> Tactical shield on the deck, though, would be badass. Could you imagine you pull that fucker out? And you're like, you're like in a wadi or something, crawl up on there, and now you're under your tactical shield, kind of like press it up out of the trench line, you know? Maybe have like a, a slit or, ooh, this one's got glass. And then it can look through there. Ka, 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 ka. Oh, sh- I want a shield. I want a shield kill. And the top needs to have kind of uh, kind of like a shape to it to where you've got multiple if you lay it down on either side horizontally you can like rest your your rifle against it and fire over top bow, bow, bow. fuck yes Ugh. i put blades on mine that's the other thing like why don't why don't shields have like sword blades on them and shit you know what i mean so you really right. cut a motherfucker you know i'm just saying yeah yeah, we could go high and right with this, people. I'm just saying, you want to take away the assault rifles? I'll gladly pick up a, a shield and a fucking sword <laughs> if you right. uh, if you want to meet somewhere. You know what I mean? In battle. Yeah. Oh, look at some of the... You got to... People, you need to Google Tactical Shield. There's a 5-0 doing exactly what I'm talking about. This guy in Fallcroft Police Office shot hell yes. This guy's got a Tactical Shield that looks like a fucking bat wing across his back. He's got an AR and a vanilla... Ugh. That, I got to say, it's a really badass cop. I don't so, normally say that. I'll I tell you what I saw the other day, and I don't remember where I saw this picture. Mm-hmm. This is And this is where we should end our tactical talk <laughs> today. So I, had, I saw this picture of these guys. I saw it the first time. It was a few months ago. but And I, they had to have been like a, a some kind of unit. It, I, I pretty much guarantee it was an American unit. Um, it had to have been a unit from like, you know, German special ops or, or Dutch, like, you know, special operations guys or something. Because they had like Belgian Malinois slung oh yeah on their backs basically yeah uh so that's awesome. basically they have an attack dog right <clears throat> slung across their back you know and when they need to release the dog they literally would just like pull a cord <laughs> and the freaking dog would be out <laughs> dude dude why I do we have <laughs> why do we have a holstered malinois on my side <laughs> I'm done. Not, not the way I don't have a guy, you know, I'm I've dying. got my freaking slung my, on your back. Yeah, dude. Right. It was freaking crazy. I'll no, I've seen picture. what you're I'll talking about. It. Oh God. It was oh, it's just awesome. insane. Like, Hey buddy. Hey, you should put your rifle down and come out. Like, no, fuck you. Oh, really? Okay. Check this out. Rip cord. Do it. Do it. Tactical yeah. dog. Oh, you want to run? We're calling oh, in the dogs. We're running now. Right. <laughs> 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 right. Oh my and run, God. You'll just die tired. Right. Yes. Oh my you God. Know? That's fantastic. Uh, just insane. So was there any, okay. So they had a, they had a spear on the, on the Spartan race. What other, was there any other like weapons? Um, nope. Uh, no. You had to carry a sandbag that was, you know, that, you know, yeah. So you pick up like the sandbag and you ran up and down, up and down the stairs, you know, a few times through, through the seats, up and down, then drop that. Then the other really, um, I saw a lot of people struggling on it was you had to carry, uh, like a five gallon water jug. Oh. Uh, and so men carried two women carried one. And uh, you just put, you know, took was the water. Like and... a serious butch who was like, ha 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 ha. When we were running, one. when we were running, we had these, there was these girls, right? Yeah. Who were all like dolled up looking like, uh, I don't know, man, but they all had like perfect makeup. Their hair was done. And they were in you know, the race. Like, they were con- yeah, yeah, yeah. Now just listen. So they're all like, they've got their yoga pants on and their freaking things and, you know, are looking fairly attractive, but they're trying to like do the men's race, but literally like they were each grabbed like two men's sandbags. Oh, right. Okay. And I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So it, I don't know what they're obviously it's like they they were just trying to show that they were badass or something, which is fine, man. But right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you're trying to prove it to yourself or trying to prove it to whatever. I mean, I'm the father of four daughters, you know, women's rights. Yes. Have at it. <laughs> but you don't need to carry two 40 pound sandbags to prove it through Fenway. Right. And then like they would stop and you'd see them like drop one of them. And they couldn't hold it. And I'm like, I look at the one girl and I'm like, do you need some help? You know what I mean? 
Right. And she didn't get all like butt hurt about it, but kind of did. Right. Um, you know, it's like like, like I don't need your man help. You know, like that's kind of the the look that I got. Right. Except for then, so I reached down and I grabbed the sandbag one handed and threw it up on her shoulder, and I was like, "All right, let's go. Let's do it." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's go. I'm carrying one sandbag, but that's fine. But you know, here. Here it is. Like, you know, because I carry heavy shit. That's what I do. Right. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, I got it. I love you guys all to death. But why do you why do people feel like they maybe it's because they've never done anything in their lives. I don't know. I have no idea. It's the spotted race. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's I, I always loved the uh the thing that Ranger Up said. What is it they say? <laughs> Tough mutter or whatever. Um no, and Ranger Up, they've got that some people's war stories don't end in high school or whatever they used to oh. see, you know what I'm saying, that <laughs> saying that they've got, right? Yeah. And uh, I just always kind of laugh. And then I always laugh at everyone wants to be a lion until it's t- time to do lion yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. So and No, I, no, no, but you forgot see, the one part about that picture, though, is his face is covered in blood. Yes, correct. <laughs> so here's the thing. Just, you know, I... There's a point when it's like you get to a point in life and I am there where I don't have anything to prove to anybody. All right. And mm-hmm. I, I just don't. And if you think I do, I, I don't fucking know what. Point it is. <laughs> right. And, and and frankly, it doesn't matter because <laughs> I don't have to prove shit to anybody. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, except for myself. Right. So I just was like, yeah. Um, I'll do that. I'm going to do this, but if I want to walk, I'm going to fucking walk. Like I, it, there's nothing that, that I'm not going to hurt myself. Number one. Um, and you just have to make it what you want it to be. If you want it to be fun, go out and have fun. People yeah. take the shit way too seriously. So they pay a hundred, they pay a hundred bucks to go beat themselves up when they could just do it with a bunch of friends and have a shit ton of fun doing it. You know what I mean? And if you know what, you don't want to do an obstacle because if you do, you think you're going to hurt yourself, then don't do it. I, You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you less of a woman. And it surely doesn't prove anything that you have this medal that says start Spartan race finisher. But if you're okay with doing it the way that you do it, then do it. If You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm proud that I finished it. Of course, you know, yeah. but you know, I didn't do it on my own. I did it with, you know, a team because I sure as hell couldn't have done it by myself. Yeah. How long Not did it take point. all you guys? I don't know. Maybe an hour and a half. Oh, damn. That's like a significant event. Yeah. I didn't realize it was. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. You know. Right. Lots of stairs. Lots and lots and lots of stairs. <laughs> and my legs are really sore from those stairs right now. Yeah, man. It was good, though. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. But, so you know, do it do it for the right reasons. Yeah. And what was sense. that reason? Well, this was for charity, pretty much. Like, these guys put together this team and raised money for Warrior Hall. So I felt, in essence, obligated to at least run it with them. You know what I mean? If they're going to give Warrior Hall a chunk of change to, you know, do operations and do good things for veterans, then the president of the freaking nonprofit sure as hell better get off his ass, regardless of how fat it is, mm-hmm. and go run the fucking race. So and how, that's the way I looked at it. So how do people donate? Like, is it do you ran the race? Oh, and then so Andrew set up a GoFundMe page. Um and set it up for Warrior Hall, yada, 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 this and that, you know? Right. Um, so there's a GoFundMe page for Warrior Hall that he set up. And, you know, he's raised like a thousand bucks, man. Nice. Uh, which might not seem like a lot, but when you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot to me. <laughs> it's a lot to Warrior Hall. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've got some good things coming up, man, here soon. Uh, so this is one of the things I wanted to bring up. Uh, we put that purchase offer in on the house. Did you remember me saying that? Yep. And so we got it. It got accepted. Nice. So congrats. Um, basically, I will be starting a, uh, I don't know what we'll call it, but my daughter told me that we should call it Warrior Acres. <laughs> Warrior um, Acres. Warrior Acres. Nice. Because uh, we're going to start a, like a farm, kind of like a veteran ceiling farm. Right. Uh, and do a veteran uh membership csa uh community service agriculture for veterans and their families um starting with probably about a quarter of an acre and then we'll expand to a half and see how many families we can get involved and basically feed central new york veteran families with some really good freaking produce that you know won't freaking kill them yeah 
to add to their venison. There you go. And other stuff. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, so I've got, it's, uh, on almost three acres of land and I could turn a full acre of it into a farm if I wanted to, or into vegetable garden. Right. <laughs> if I wanted to without much, I mean, obviously a shit ton of work, but not much, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not like, uh, yeah. I don't have to like chop down trees and shit. I just have to till up land and, and cultivate it, you know? Right. No, that's fantastic. So, you know, we'll see how big this gets, but, uh, so are you going to, so put- but, but that will be part of warrior hall as well, you know? Nice. Um, so that'll be on warriorhall.org. Yeah. So nice. I will get that up and keep that updated. Once I get it moving in that direction, I've already got somebody to donate seeds and I've got pretty much all the compost that I could ever need Yeah, that somebody else will donate from an organic farm that's in the area cool. that I have a relationship with. Um, yeah, man. Hell yes. Getting it done, man. Moving it down the line. Yeah. So one you know, foot in front stuff, of the other. Stuff's expanding. It's fantastic. Oh, it's so great. I found that picture. You know you're a badass when you carry a holster to attack dog to war. <laughs> <laughs> they jump out of airplanes like that too. <laughs> yeah. Crazy so bastards. They got them slung across their back, literally like in a pack. Like that's how it looked. But then they're they're muzzled. Mm-hmm. Why are the dogs muzzled? Because they're obviously not in war. Right there, they're obviously training. Well, yeah, that's uh, kind of like putting the BFA on your, oof, yeah, on your you M16. <laughs> Got to put the BFA on there. Dog. It's like, oh, yeah, dude, we're using Miles. Ge- we're using Miles gear. All right, Hans. So, can you put a muzzle on your fucking tactical dog? No one needs to get bit the fuck. Yeah. These guys are assholes. I'm done. I'm done cross training with the Belgians, motherfuckers. <laughs> I got another one of a guy jumping out of an airplane with the dog. That's pretty cool. It's craziness. <sighs> so cool. Oh my goodness. Well, good on you, man. Good shit over at the Spartan race. Yeah, it was fun. And, uh, Next year, I think we should get uh, Cigars and Sea Stories to come to Vets Rock Vets Rock as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I think we need to do like a big booth of Warrior Hall and uh, Cigars yeah. and Sea Stories next to it and just kind of like We could like guys. record live and shit. Yeah, we could in theory, you know. There you go. Give us your comments. Tell us what you'd like to see. We'd love to, uh, we'd love to hear how your Veterans Day holiday extravaganza event went so uh if you guys want to come on the show get in touch with us it's contact at cigars and sea stories.com again it's just contact at cigars and sea stories.com we'd be honored to have you on the show you got to be a veteran you got to be adding value to the world uh in order to be on the show but by all means get in touch with us you can also look up you know mike penny on there bennett tanton on there and our individual web addresses or email addresses bennett at cigars and sea i'm mike at cigars and sea so you can also follow us on instagram i'm on instagram doing my thing kind of cross pollinating to everything else and yeah yeah so and yeah yeah i'll i'll put up i took a couple of photos over the veteran holiday so to speak we also did a uh um, i was on another panel i was moderating some other things it was yeah there were some other there were some other kick-ass events that happened over the weekend and there were some other not so kick-ass events that happened over the weekend so we'll talk about that in another episode yeah shit hell yeah well good shit man spartan race hell yes go to warriorhall.org forward slash donate correct in order to donate yeah okay yeah warriorhall.org forward yeah and we're gonna donate. update a lot of that stuff like right now it's just done through paypal and yeah you know that a lot of people don't like that and you know that's fine um so there you go you know but again you have to have money to do this stuff uh, right. I, there's only so much I can put in on my own. Right. Uh, and that's basically what we've been running off of for a year is the money that I put in and small donations here and there. And, you know, but I think we're about to blow up, man. Hell so, yeah. yeah. Especially with all this publicity I get after I get a spear kill and a shield kill. It's that's be right. Fantastic. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, and on, on that note, we cue the music.